Councillor Cordover. Thank you, Mayor. This is a very comprehensive report, and um, I'm in general agreement with, uh, with the report. The proposal is aimed at improving the reliability of the ferry service and managing the traffic conditions more effectively, more efficiently, and the demand for the ferry service, of course, has steadily grown in recent years, and that incremental growth is expected to continue. So I agree that this proposal is aimed at enhancing that efficiency of what is a crucial transport network system which serves as the only access to Bruny Island. So that's why it's so important that we get this right. Um, the proposed development will supplement the existing terminal by including a second roll-on, roll-off berth, dual lane loading ramp and installation of associated signage and new ticketing control infrastructure to support the planned operational upgrades to the terminal. I'm pleased to see that as part of the conditions in the recommendation that native vegetation removal is limited to the minimum required for the construction of the rock armouring. No removal of high conservation value trees or native vegetation communities is approved as part of the permit, and I think that's very important. No further felling, lopping, ring barking or otherwise injuring or destroying of native vegetation is to take place without the prior written permission of council. Now, my questions are around additional access points for emergency services vehicles, and I'm uh, at any stage happy to be reined in within the constraints of um, my role as a planning authority here, but um, I note that in the construction environmental management plan, there's discussion that, this is now on page 86, um, at the bottom of the paragraph it says, this will ensure the contractor has effectively identified and attributed construction-related environmental risks and has the systems and processes in place to effectively mitigate risk and respond to and report environmental incidents and emergency scenarios. I want to draw our attention to the fact that this part of the crucial transport network system is the only access to Bruny Island and therefore my question is about what happens in case of emergency and what provision is made uh, within this development application to have space for additional access points for emergency services vehicles and uh, what does that look like when and if this DA is approved, what does emergency services management look like um, as a result of, of this DA? Is there a proper provision for emergency services vehicles to get in and out under this DA? I think you're right. It's getting pretty close to the wind in terms of being relevant to the planning scheme. Um, Ms Tyler Moore, do you want to... Um, through you, Mayor, the construction management plan is yet to come in, so we've, we've outlined what they need to submit, so it'll be included in that. But ultimately, the, it's DSG's responsibility to make sure that they're keeping their highways, still regarded as a highway because their road, um, open and available for emergency services. So it's not really council's responsibility, it's their responsibility, and I'm sure that they would address that. Okay. And so I guess an extension to that um, is, I guess... Yeah, the thrust of my question is about the parking as well, in a sense that um, what head of power do we have to, um, yeah, to make sure that those provisions are, are in place? Do we have any, any head of power or we have to just wait for further permits through DSG? Ms Tolemore. Um, through you, Mayor. If the question is about parking during construction that will be de dealt with under the construction management plan and then almost always is interruption to traffic and parking in, around any development. If it's about the ongoing parking and the issues about cars banking on the highway during peak season, that's not covered under this application because this application is just for the berth. Okay. And I was hoping you could also elaborate on the... It says within the report that noise won't be increased and I was just hoping that you could elaborate on yeah, what, why it is that the, the extra additions will actually result in less noise or the same amount of noise as currently. Ms Tolemore. Um, through you, Mayor. The, um, as mentioned earlier, they did do a noise assessment as part of this application and it's included limitations of what the noise level should be in those areas. Um, and you'll see in the planning permit conditions that it's a requirement that if, should they purchase a new ferry, um, it must not be noisier than the existing ferries. So this application is a little bit um, complicated in the, se in the sense of um, noise control because... We can't control the ferries that are already operating because that's an existing factor that occurs, so you can't necessarily rein that in, but we do acknowledge that the additional ferry idling um, will potentially, so that's where the restrictions are on the MV Bowen. 
In terms of actual noise um, and noise of watercraft, it's actually dealt with under mast, not under council, and it can also be dealt with just to complicate things under EMCA as well, um, and the noise provisions which our environmental health officers deal with. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit complicated, um, but they did have an independent noise assessment done and we were satisfied with the recommendations and the content and assessment of that. Thank you. And so I guess just to sum up my contribution, Mayor, this is a critical piece of infrastructure and these upgrades uh, appear to be necessary in order to make things more efficient and more effective. Um, I'm in agreement with the recommendation that this proposal satisfies the relevant acceptable solutions and performance criteria for the, for the scheme, and therefore I'll be supporting it. Thank you. Councillor Midgley. Thank you, Mayor. 